Firstly, Victor, uh, Champions Cup final to look forward to this weekend. How much excitement is there in the camp? Mate, it's, uh, it's, it's just hugely exciting and uh, a few nerves there early on, but I think um, now we're just literally just a lot of excitement uh, just heading into this massive challenge against Toulouse. An all-French final, does that make it even more interesting? Yeah, it's... Um, you know, it's, it's an interesting one that we went through all the other Anglo-Saxon teams earlier on. And, you know, generally you're thinking of having the same thing in the final, but we've played these guys twice already uh, and they've already they've been in us twice already. It gives it a different flavour, but in a Champions Cup final, uh, I know very much, you know, we're going to be in Twickenham. So it's uh, there's no home advantage, there's none of that. So we're just looking forward to the game. And as you say, it's a Twickenham. That's going to be great, isn't it? Yeah, look, it's um, I've, I've played there a couple of times and personally it's... Uh, it's a great stadium. Obviously, it won't be full, um, so the atmosphere might be a little bit muted, but um, it's still fine. Well, there's still going to be some passionate French fans. I'm guessing some uh, some other fans as well of Champions Cup rugby. So I th we're looking forward to, to playing some uh, some good rugby. Can you believe how far your team has come? You know, Pro D2 side in 2014, and now you're in a Champions Cup final? Um, I guess, yeah, it's... I... I, I can't believe it's kind of come around this quick. I can believe we're, we're here because we've always had um, had the goals of being competitive in the Champions Cup. And obviously that means that whatever happens after that, if you make a quarterfinal, could happen. Then semifinal could happen. But um, to have really had the quality uh, of guys that we've had come in the last couple, come in the last couple of couple of years, I think it's become more and more realistic. Uh, we've always had guys like uh, Winyat or Neil, um, Levani Botia. You know, always these guys have always been around helping this club uh, move up, and then. With the addition of you know guys like uh, Dylan Leeds and Will Skelton and obviously Tawiri Kubalo, these other guys that have come in, it's um it's just taken the the prospects of the club into that next level and um it's been uh, possible to see obviously in the quarterfinal against South, then the semis against Leinster and, and hopefully uh, we can see that same kind of quality on uh, on the game against uh, Toulouse. Since coming to La Rochelle in 2016. You seem as if you're enjoying your rugby. You're certainly playing that way out in the pitch. How, good, how much fun has it been? Yeah, I'm, I'm definitely loving it, um, especially because I was here early doors and seeing the evolution of the club. You know, we were just training, you know, training in, at the back end of the stadium um, not long ago when I first arrived. And we're obviously still sharing our, lunch, our lunches, but in a really tiny, tiny room. And, you know, we'd, we'd go in the changing room to hang out because that's all we had. Uh, there was no, like, common room that we have now. And I think... It's um, the evolution to where we are now in terms of the game knowledge and the game now, see everything like that. Um, and just the, the guys, we've always had good guys, um, but now it's the professionalism around it with some of the stuff Rog and, uh, and John have brought. It's um, It's been awesome to be a part of. And um, the young guys, I think we've got a really good bunch of young boys that really push through and help to keep the older guys like myself uh, really competitive, a few, a few extra quality players. And I think um, you get what we've, we've got now, which is uh, just... Uh, a much better understanding of what it takes to win, uh, to win those big games, and mate, it's it's fun as well because we're not just trying to kick and put pressure. We're definitely knowing how to do that, but then also we're, we've got every license to just play with the ball and, and have a go. And how much have you enjoyed working with Ron O'Gara? How much does he bring to your team? Oh, Ron, and I think um, you know, first and foremost, he's pretty approachable, and so you know, anytime you've got a coach like that, he's willing to share ideas and pretty open to, to keeping us uh, positive, I guess, and optimistic in everything we we, we set out to do. So, you know, straight away, um, you can have a bit of fear, you know, coming from going into finals, like trying to make sure that we just play conservatively and do the right things. But yes, 100%, you got to get that right. But then we can't can't go into our shells either because that's, that's not our game. And so I think he's really helped uh, to bring a real belief, uh, him and Jono, in terms of that sort of stuff. And it's just uh, we've been riding a wave recently and uh, the boys, you know, it's, it's a funny thing. Once the boys start believing, anything can happen and that goes for any team. You obviously out-muscled Leinster. Is that something you will look to do to Toulouse? Um, I wouldn't say wouldn't say we are muscled Leinster, but I mean, we got we got we got the rub of the green a little bit against them and um, got a few dominant contacts early on to, to get on top, yes. And then obviously we've got Toulouse and... Look, we're going to look to try and um, and do a similar kind of thing. Obviously, it's a physical. They've got just as much physical prowess as as us, if not more. Like with all their big ball runners and and whatnot. So it's it's nothing new to us in terms of uh, the physical challenge that lies ahead of us. I think if anything, it's going to be just a 
a game of uh, like any finals game. Whoever makes the the right decisions, getting out of their half, you know, getting not not making bad decisions, losing the ball, like knocking the ball on or anything, you know, all the little mistakes they end up adding up in the big games. And so I think uh, it'll just be a real arm wrestle or that kind of thing. So I think physically we're pretty similar. And what about looking out for Chesney Colby? Are you going to stop him? Is there a special game plan for him? Oh, it would be great if he wasn't playing, but uh, <laughs> I guess he did. <laughs> look, um, look, he's he's a massive threat. Uh, obviously, um, he's pretty good in the high ball. He's also obviously his you know his legs that can dance around anyone and make make us look like a newborn newborn deer. But look, mate, it's a uh, it's a uh, it's a challenge that every team has to face, and we know that we're just going to have to keep an eye on him. And uh, obviously, if we can deprive him of the ball, that's that's great. But at the same time, I know um, Toulouse will be looking to get him involved in the game, so defensively, we'll definitely have to be on. Do you think there's extra motivation for you guys to stop Toulouse going for that record five titles? Yeah, I think there's just motivation for us full stop. Uh, in terms of uh, just setting a new a new standard for this club for the boys that are in this team. Um, you know, we said earlier on that yeah, we never dreamed it was possible, but we had always hoped that now that we're here, you know, would it be such a waste to, to just get here and you know, obviously there's always a possibility of losing, but. At the same time, why not us? And I think that's been the message that we've been driving for a while. They Toulouse has their own pressures of their own legacy and all that kind of stuff. Uh, they could they could weigh on them um, in terms of getting the five and all the rest of it, and and then also what would happen if they did lose, and then what that means to the top fourteen. But us, you know, everything's so new for us, and I think that's probably one thing that we're going to try and take uh, as a nice warm wind at our back, pressure wise, rather than a heavy load on our shoulders. And you'll go up against your own kind of a guy you come on the World Cup final for. That's pretty cool, isn't it? Yeah, man. It's um look, I've got a lot of respect for Jerome. Um we're both very competitive. And so uh look, you know, we're off the field, you know, we're best of friends, but on the field it's there's uh not much more than not much more of a challenge than going head to head with a guy like that. You've obviously won two World Cups, a super rugby winners medal. And how would it compare if you did win this weekend? And win the Champions Cup final, mate. It's um, I think it'll be a personal, it'll be just personally so gratifying for myself in terms of my family, but also this club. And I think because we we made the decision to move over here, knowing well, thinking that it was going to be a slow grind to really build and create something special in this place, because we knew they had great people and great players, but that doesn't just because you got great people doesn't necessarily mean anything's going to come of it, you know and to have seen the trajectory of where we arrived to where we are now, I think it'll be um, it'll just be a great way to, to to top it off. You know, I'm in the in the twilight years of my of my career, so um, for me to be able to um, even if it is after, you know, for us to top it off with the title, it's um, mate, it's 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 everything right now. Just one or two more for me. What's it like to play with Will Skelton, a high aware, still in legs? All these great players have missed out loads there. It's a brilliant to play with them. Yeah, it's so awesome to play with guys like that. I mean, the first guy you mentioned, uh, Will Skelton, he um, he's just got is such a student of the game, really well applied in terms of what he how he does his homework, bring the the thinking that he brings behind lineouts and lineout defense, and even around the park, he's just really really well studied and gives us gives some great ideas. And then you got guys like Ehire, and he's man, he's just a, a phenom when he you know when he gets going, and he's got the confidence of the boys, and even himself, he's just played himself into some great form. All the guys, and I think around all that, everyone's just got each other's backs in terms of we're we're backing each other to make decisions. You know, if we've got game plans and whatnot, but at the same time, if you if you want to give something a go, we we back each other to do it because that's uh, the kind of environment we've got. We've got guys uh, that are feeling safe enough to take risks and take chances. Um, if, if it's something that slightly hasn't even been trained for. And since coming to La Rochelle, was your biggest ambition to win trophies? Yeah. I th- my first ambition actually when I came to La Rochelle was to, was to help create an environment where everyone felt like they belonged. Uh, I just felt like, because as a, as a foreigner, that's the first thing that you're worried about. Um, you're coming into a place and you know you're a foreigner and I, I'd heard all the stories about how you just sort of just got to buck up and, and get along and do the French way, but I've always believed in the middle way, even in New Zealand, you know, like we get pretty just one dimensional in terms of how, how things are done. But coming here to France, it was awesome to see the French way. Like it was absolutely mind blowing. Some of the stuff they were doing, I was going, oh my God, like we would never do that back home. But then a couple of years back into it, I realized that it's, uh, 
it's a real balance of the laissez-faire as well as the strict regime of what we want to do and how we want to achieve it. But then you got to let the boys play, which is the French flair thing, you know. So it's um it's something that I always wanted to help uh, help get a balance of rugby wise, but then environment wise, I always just wanted whoever to come to really feel like they belong in this outfit, in this team, and uh, their families as well, because I've got a family and I, I just want the wives and the children and everyone to feel a part of something bigger. Finally, what do you think you have to get right the most to beat Toulouse? I think, I think uh, getting out of our, getting any team that gets out of their half, you know, if you're getting kickoffs, if you're lucky enough to be receiving a lot of kickoffs, um, <laughs> I think uh, you just want to make sure you do the, the basics right by getting kicking that ball out, setting out, setting a set piece on over their halfway and and just making sure they're not getting too much ball uh, inside your half because once they get going, they're, they're a hard team to stop and they've got threats all over the park. So if you can make force them to try and play uh, down in their half, then that's, uh, that's much better than uh, letting them come closer and, and playing a game down there.